In this module, we will take a look at the weather radar equation, as well as a couple of other terms that are related to properties of the radar itself and are important in this equation. The average power returned to an antenna after it transmits a signal is dependent upon several factors. The power transmitted, the antenna gain, the pulse duration, the beam width, the wavelength, the dielectric constants of the targets, the radar reflectivity factor, and the range. The radar reflectivity factor is denoted by Z and is perhaps the most important variable that radar meteorologists consider. It is often simply referred to as reflectivity by many people. It is related to the sum of the sixth power of all the diameters of all the targets in a contributing volume. This equation describes the power returned to an antenna by a set of targets distributed throughout a contributing volume and can be derived by starting with the equation shown in blue at the top, which we first encountered when discussing scatterometers. Note that the contributing volume, this V sub C, is that contained within a single gate. The antenna gain is a property of the reflector itself. An isotropic radiator would transmit equally in all directions. The gain, plotted here in two dimensions in red, represents the ratio of the actual power transmitted as a function of direction, in space, relative to a lossless isotropic radiator. A perfect reflector would direct radiation into a narrow beam in the direction in which the radar was pointing, which is denoted by this black arrow. And you can see that most of the energy is, and this is on a logarithmic scale, so the difference between the power here and the power at these uh, other little lobes is quite large. However, radar antennas are still not perfect reflectors. A small amount of power is reflected by the dish in unintended directions away from the main lobe. We call these side lobes. That radiation can also be returned back to the antenna and picked up by the receiver. However, we assume that all backscattered radiation collected during a radar's dwell time comes from somewhere along the main lobe. We'll briefly explore the ramifications of side lobes in a different module that discusses various types of anomalous echoes. Finally, the beam width is the angle over which the antenna gain function is one half of its maximum value, which is located along the center of the main lobe. And we assume that this antenna gain function uh, from which we get the beam width is essentially Gaussianly distributed across uh, the ray. As stated before, the beam width decreases as the antenna size increases. The beam width is also proportional to the wavelength. This means that high frequency radars can operate with much smaller antennas to achieve an acceptable beam width for remote sensing of clouds. As a result of the sixth power dependence of radar reflectivity factor on size, Z is highly sensitive to the size of targets. Large targets can have outsized influence on Z in a volume. Consider, consider the examples shown here. The two blue dots are drawn to scale, with the blue dot on the right being 10 times the diameter of the small dot on the left. Because of the sixth power dependence of radar reflectivity factor on size, the large drop would yield a reflectivity 10 to the 6th, or 1 million times larger than the single small droplet. Said another way, 1 million small droplets would be required in a single volume to yield the same reflectivity as the one large drop, even though the 1 million small droplets would collectively have 10,000 times the total volume. This means that when looking at radar reflectivity factor, you'll be looking at information that mostly describes only the largest targets in a contributing volume. Note that this drop-to-drop -drop comparison is for visual purposes only. A single drop in a contributing volume will typically not return enough backscattered power to produce a signal that is able to be processed. We would say in such a case that the return signal is less than the sensitivity of the radar. However, Antennas with extremely high gain or very large transmitted power can be sufficiently sensitive to detect individual raindrops. The mid-course radar, or MCR, is operated by the Navy near Cape Canaveral and was previously used to track debris from space shuttles during launch. 
It has a high sensitivity, primarily because it transmits such a high-powered signal. Our weather radar equation can then be rearranged to think about how properties of the radar itself, shown in red, and of the target, shown in purple, impact the radar reflectivity factor in blue on the left-hand side of the equation. In this formulation, Z depends on the power received, which is related to the backscatter coefficient of the target, which is itself related to size. The example shown here, moving along to talking about attenuation, shows two plots of reflectivity derived from data from two different radars near the same location. This is to show an example of how the size of particles present may not necessarily correspond to the reflectivity that you see on a particular radar display. The left panel represents S-band reflectivity, while the right panel illustrates X-band reflectivity. Remember, the X-band radiation is at a higher frequency, shorter wavelength. The approximate locations of the radars are denoted by gray arrows. They are looking northwestward toward the same squall line. The S-band radar detects a wide area of stratiform precipitation behind a leading squall line. The squall line is denoted in the left by purple to white colors that represent reflectivity up to a very large value exceeding 70 dBZ, and lighter rain is denoted to the northwest of the apparently southeastward moving squall line. The X-band radar detects the same squall line, although its reflectivity is lower than the S-band value. Furthermore, the X-band radar sees very little behind the squall line even though the S-band radar clearly denotes that raindrops are present. This happens because the X-band signal is attenuated by liquid water. Attenuation just refers to the loss of transmitted signal by absorption or scattering away from the ray. To understand this process for active sensors, let's consider attenuation as a function of the familiar range of frequencies on the x-axis that we discussed when learning about passive microwave sensors in a previous lecture series. The one-way attenuation is plotted here on the y-axis. Double this number to yield the attenuation from and back to the radar. Larger attenuation means that less signal is available for backscatter to the radar. A few features are evident. First, the attenuation generally increases as the frequency increases. This is related to the increased ability of water vapor to absorb radiation as microwave frequency increases. This is the primary reason that we cannot use high frequency radar, such as Ka band or W band in the tropics to see at long ranges. Too much signal is simply absorbed over long distances to capture a high enough signal to noise ratio to make a meaningful measurement except for within a few thousand meters of the antenna. The different solid lines represent various mixing ratios of atmospheric water vapor. And then we, we can see that for all frequencies, attenuation increases as the water vapor concentration increases. So for example, here at 35 gigahertz, which is about the Ka band for low amounts of water vapor, low attenuation. But as we increase the water vapor, we have more attenuation. Second, some particular frequencies seem to have enhanced attenuation. The first is around 22 gigahertz, which is in a water vapor absorption band. And the second is in the oxygen absorption band near 60 gigahertz, which is not dependent upon the water vapor concentration. Other absorption bands are seen at higher frequencies as well. And third, the attenuation at low frequencies, and down here this dashed line for S band, is not very large. It's negligible compared to these higher wavelengths. In other words, S band radiation is not strongly absorbed or heavily scattered away from the radar by an atmospheric target. Finally, other higher frequency bands are situated in parts of the spectrum where attenuation is minimized. So for example, W band or Ka band fall in dips in this uh, plot of attenuation. And so even though they are partially attenuated 
due to absorption by water vapor um, or by the atmosphere even in the absence of water vapor, we can still use these for short range detection of small targets such as ice crystals or cloud droplets.